over the past few years, there the International League Against Epilepsy has come up with new guidelines. There's been a new classification. There's new treatment guidelines. Uh, there's exciting things about the management of neonatal neurology. And the New England Journal of Medicine, luckily, um, had asked to, me to write a review to show the rest of the population all these new exciting things that's happening to neonatal seizures. So for the seizure semiology, the ILE neonatal seizure classification, there's specific things that babies do at the bedside that give clues for prognosis and workup and management. And the thing with neonatal seizures is the sooner you recognize them, the sooner you could diagnose them, the sooner you could treat them. So having these clues as to when the seizures present, what the seizures look like, and what we think the etiology is, all these new exciting things with genetics is every day getting more and more advanced. And there's specific uh, semiologies of the seizures that we can treat. So I think recognizing them early can definitely um, give us, make us go down the right path for treatment to hopefully stop the seizures. So neonatal seizures is different than the rest of the older population. So where neonatal epilepsies do exist, and the ILE has also just recognized that they've reclassified all the neonatal syndrome, which is exciting. Most of the seizures in this age period is acute reactive seizure. So it's a seizure in response to an acute event, whether it be an infection or HIE or uh, a stroke or a bleed, there's typically a triggering insult that causes the seizures. So it's an acute, that's why recognizing them quickly, because that might be the only sign that something is up is having a seizure. So recognizing the seizure quickly in order to treat the underlying etiology is so key. So it, it's different than epilepsy down the line in older people. So this is still being worked on. There's been, and our new, uh, the ILE has published guidelines of how long to treat the seizures and when we should remove them. And there's not a lot published yet since our systematic review, uh, two other papers have come out saying how long we should continue it. And a lot of times we should stop if it's due to an acute event. Once that event is stopped and treated and the seizures have stopped, we should start withdrawing the anti-seizure medication before they go home. If they have one of the neonatal epilepsy syndromes, that's obviously a different story and we'll continue the seizure medications. But for the acute seizures, we typically will stop them regardless of what the EEG or MRI shows. So first line treatment for neonatal seizures is phenobarbital, which is the first anti-seizure medication that has ever been developed. And over all these years, we haven't really had any, there's only been two to three um, or randomized controlled studies to, um, to see which is the best anti-seizure medication. So we use phenobarbital, which is an old medication, but works. And it's been proven the um, 2020 was our last randomized controlled trial that showed that phenobarbital was superior to levetiracetam. In terms of genes and genetics, we're, we're learning, we're now able to send gene panels on these patients who we suspect have a neonatal epilepsy and whether they're based on the family history, whether based on the type of seizure pattern they have. So we know certain medications work for specific um, syndromes. So like KCNQ2, we know a sodium channel blocker works better with them. We just need more trials. There's uh, neonatal seizures is gaining some popularity and gaining some press, but it, it still is in the beginning stages. So it, it's really hard to get approval for these types of studies. And so we really need more randomized controlled trials and bigger studies uh, to see what the best medication is, see how all, all these questions need to be studied on a much broader scale.